Ladies and gentlemen, there is something Tucker Carlson is not telling you about Putin and Russia. Welcome back to the JP Rex channel, my beautiful freedom loving friend, where we like to call out the lies, hypocrisy, and corruption of tyrants and Satan, shine the light of awareness on woke absurdities, as well as highlight the amazing work of other freedom fighters. Now, one of those freedom fighters that I have the utmost respect for is Tucker Carlson. We saw him take the world by storm, well, in a lot of ways, especially since leaving Fox. But most recently, his massive interview with Vladimir Putin. Uh, he's a Russian president, if you didn't know. I hear on Tucker's Twitter alone that interview has over 200 million views, 206 million views. It's massive. We also saw some other pieces of Tucker speaking very highly about Russia and Moscow, which I think is great. He is, you know, cutting the membrane of the the narrative that tries to bind people into thinking only one thing about Putin and Russia. And I really appreciate Tucker Carlson for doing that. I don't think any of that work needs to be discounted. But there was one big thing that Tucker didn't ask Putin about that I would dare say w would reveal Putin's shadow side, his corruption, his uh, murderous tendencies. And that is asking him about Alexei Navalny, Putin's political opponent that several years ago, allegedly Putin had him poisoned. The guy lived through it, made it to a hospital in Germany after he was poisoned with a nerve agent. And then Putin, well, imprisoned his political rival, Alexei Navalny. Ever hear of something like that? Uh, we don't do that in the U.S. We're trying, but we don't do it yet. We're trying to do that. So during the interview with Putin, I think that was like the biggest thing that needed to be talked about, but wasn't talked about. And then this Justin, Alexei Navalny just died in a Russian prison. And there is no suspicion of this being of natural causes. It looks like nothing but murder. So let's get into it. Starting with just a little bit more context of Tucker speaking highly of Russia, Moscow and the subway system, which I think is great. Like everything is not all bad. It's great. And I think for freedom loving people, we, we want to hear truth. It's like, cool. Like, tell me the truth. If it's great, tell me. And if there's bad, tell me that. And if there's both, tell me that. Uh, let's hear a couple other good things that Tucker uh, talked about post-interview that gives a good contrast to what he didn't talk about. What was radicalizing, very shocking and very disturbing for me was the city of Moscow, where I'd never been, the biggest city in Europe, 13 million people. And it is so much nicer than any city in my country. And he goes on, but you get the gist of that. He liked Moscow and he's like, yeah, a lot of cities in the US are complete crap. Unfortunately, that's because they are. And here's Tucker giving a rundown of his experience of the Moscow subway system, contrasting that with the subway systems and leftist degenerate cities in the US. There's no graffiti, there's no filth, there are no foul smells. There are no bums or drug addicts or rapists or people waiting to push you onto the train tracks and kill you. Those are all good qualities of a subway system. And quite frankly, I believe Tucker. I, I'll take that at face value. Like, great, it's Moscow, Russia. They do some things better. But the big question that he didn't ask Putin was about his just barbaric tactics, his murderous tendencies that really appear to be true. Now, before we get into the gory details of those that, were, that are pretty darn interesting, I'll just say this, like, I don't blame Tucker. I'm not trying to like, Tucker is bad. It's like, no, I think Tucker is amazing. And if I was in Tucker's position, I would have also not asked Putin about this. Why? Because I would want to make it out of the interview alive. And I think Tucker has great discernment. I think he knows if he would have asked Putin about this, even if Tucker didn't fear for his life, but he probably should. But even if he didn't, asking Putin about something that Putin absolutely wants to pretend doesn't exist, you know, the political persecution of his rival, who it died shortly thereafter, the, the interview, that would have got Putin to, like, close up. He wouldn't have been nearly as open in the interview, I would suspect. And I think Tucker knows this. I don't think he's afraid to push anybody, but I think he's also smart. He knows what do I need to say and what do I need to not say to get this person to open up for the biggest net gain. So here you'll see a video of Alexei Navalny, Putin's political rival, who was openly criticizing Putin, who, who apparently wanted to bring more freedom to Russia. And Putin says, well, not on my watch. We do elections here and you're allowed to vote for me. <laughs> Not really anybody else. So here is Alexei Navalny on February 15th, one day before his death, which 
by all accounts, really looks like a murder. Now, you have to ask yourself, if Navalny just kind of died of natural causes in an Arctic Russian prison a thousand miles north of Moscow, known for brutality on prisoners, you have to ask yourself, does this guy appear to be a dude who's on the verge of death? He died the next day. You can ask yourself that, but here's a clip of Navalny one day before his death slash maybe murder. By the way, this is him on video appearing before a judge. That's how they do it in Russia. So, a few of the details before we get to more of the details, and by the way, there's massive, I would dare say, political conflict around this, because I think in the wake of, uh, of Tucker's interview with Putin, the right's kind of like, hey, there's a lot of Putin propaganda out there, we don't want to believe that, so maybe Putin's not such a bad guy, and the left is like, we want you to only think Putin's a bad guy, so now this looks like Putin is doing a bad guy thing, so the left wants to leverage it, the right's like, ah, I don't know, maybe, so... We're going to get cut through some of the uh, political narrative confusion, but here's a few details. One, Navalny was in a high-security Russian prison serving a 30-year prison sentence, crime basically being Putin's political rival. Russia's Federal Penitentiary Service said in a statement that Navalny had died after feeling unwell following a walk Friday. I bet he was not feeling well. Powerful world leader Joe Biden said about Navalny's death, he's both not surprised and outraged. To which the Kremlin responded, decrying what it said were absolutely rabid statements. So, you know, Russia's official narrative is, no, nah, he died after he was feeling unwell. You know, uh, accidents happen, that's natural causes. Why is his body all bruised? Oh, must have had a cold. And another official statement, on February 16th, 2024, in penal colony number three, convict A.A. A. Navalny felt unwell after a walk, almost immediately losing consciousness. Why is his skull fractured? I don't know. The prison service for the Yamalo Nenets region, where Navalny was moved, sent a statement on its website. Now, on such a contentious topic as anything about Putin, let alone the death of his political rival that he had imprisoned, which looks insanely suspicious. Personally, I want to see all sides of this story. I do with any story because I like to be a free thinker. I want to know which side left and right and center is saying what so that I can better make up my own mind. And especially on this story, that's why I'm now at ground.news. I love ground news because it takes down the veil of deception that we typically get with the media and it brings transparency because it tells you exactly where a story is coming from, what that media's bias is, and it lets you sort stories based on stories coming from left publications, center publications, and publications that have a bias towards the right. Because if you're like me, you want to know what everybody is saying and Ground News lets you do it easily with transparency. Why? Because Ground News is not a tool that tells you what to think. Rather, it's a tool that adds more context so you can better make up your own mind and be a more free, sovereign, free thinker, which is something I strive for. And here in the news of Alexei Navalny, you see there's 547 stories, which you can click through and read each story from its original link. And before we get back to Navalny and the suspicious events around his untimely death, I also love the blind spot feature in Ground News. Here you'll find news stories that have little to no reporting on the left. I wonder why, what don't they want you to know? And same thing for the right, but I'm always more interested. What is happening? that the left is absolutely not reporting on. So, for example, you can find a one story is Biden narrowly avoids fall after losing balance on Air Force One steps. Again, <laughs> why doesn't the left want you to know that? He's definitely strong and fit to run in 2024, isn't he? Don't run that story. And if you're like me and you too want to move past the deception in the media so you can stay fully informed, then go to ground.news slash jpreacts. Subscribe through my link for less than a dollar a month or save 40% off unlimited access for 
this month only. And you're not going to be annoyed by ads on Ground News because Ground News doesn't fund itself through obnoxious advertisements that probably would have to influence what stories they can and cannot run. No, Ground News is for the people, by the people. It is subscriber funded. So go to ground.news slash jprax so you can stay fully informed and do your own thinking. From Ground News, I want to I wanna take a look at this. UK sanctions six officials at Russian prison where Navalny died. Now, obviously there's a narrative that says Putin is bad. Cool. I, I do think he does bad things. But it makes me wonder, okay, uh, Navalny dying, probably being murdered, uh, probably at the order of Putin. Is this being set up as just pure propaganda or did it actually happen? And it's now being leveraged by the rest of the world that's trying to keep this tight narrative. Everybody thinking Putin's bad, but nonetheless, I don't know, but UK sanctioned six officials at Russian prison where Navalny died. Sanctioned them. UK Foreign Minister David Cameron said Wednesday that London had imposed sanctions on six officials at the head of the Siberian penal colony where Russian opposition figure Alexei Navalny died. Those responsible for Navalny's brutal treatment should be under no illusion. We will hold them accountable. The sanctioned individuals will be subject to freezes of any UK assets and travel bans. By the way, they were also talking about sanctioning and travel bans on Tucker Carlson. Here's where the plot thickens. This source I found from Ground News. Alexei Navalny killed by KGB trademark punch to heart, human rights campaigner claims. The jailed Russian opposition leader was reported dead by Russia's prison service on Friday, though few details have so far been released about his cause of death. Authorities have told his mother she will not be able to see his body for another two weeks while it's being held for chemical analysis. And uh, there's suspicion, like, yeah, they're not going to release his body because they don't want people to know how he died. Many of his supporters, including his own wife, believe he was murdered by Vladimir Putin's rep uh, repressive state, with one theory emerging that he had been poisoned uh, with a nerve agent, Novichok. Others have pointed to alleged signs of bruising found on his body as evidence of mistreatment. Navalny, who had led uh, the banned Russia of the Future Party in a leading anti-corruption campaign, had been in prison since returning from Germany in February 2021. But now, Russia exile and human rights campaigner Vladimir Ostchekin has reported that close sources inside the prison claim he was murdered by a single punch to his heart, a brutal and instant form of execution favored by KGB during Soviet times. Uh, he told the Times... It is an old method of KGB Special Forces Division. They train their operatives to kill a man with one punch in the heart. It's kind of like Kill Bill stuff. In the center of the body, it was a hallmark of the KGB. Another insider uh, believes that Navalny would have likely been put in an open-air solitary confinement for several hours before his death. Now, this is a thousand miles north of Moscow in the winter, which would have exposed him to extreme cold temperatures. The drop in blood circulation would make it very easy to kill someone. But here's the the funniest part that's not really funny, but uh. Alexei Navalny is believed to have died on February 16th after he collapsed following a walk in prison. That's not the funny part. Russian authorities claim he died of sudden death syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> what did he die from? Sudden death syndrome. With all that's going on, you know, the the, the sides of you know, the political aisle and the media that like, yeah, you know, like Tucker's side of like, like Putin might be a bad guy, but like, here's some good about Moscow and Russia. And the left is like, there's nothing good about Moscow, Russia, or Putin. Bad. Let's stand with Ukraine harder. There's a book you can see here. It's called Red Notice by Bill Browder. I read this a couple years ago, and this is, it's a, a true story. It's just like a biographical or autobiographical experience. This guy, Bill Browder, he's a, an American investor who went over to Russia for investing purposes, lived there for a long time. And the story takes a dark turn because one of his financial partners got thrown in prison because they were starting to uncover and expose high levels of corruption with Russian oligarchs tracking back to the Russian state and Putin. And uh, his reward for exposing this is Bill Browder's partner was thrown in a Russian prison and tortured, beaten, and eventually uh, died from being beaten to death. So do I believe this kind of thing happens in Russia? Yes, I do. Do I believe the left? Putin's all bad. No, I don't. Do I believe that Putin is some bad? Yeah, definitely. So with that said, 
Uh, I think there's a good reason why Tucker did not talk to Putin about Alexei Navalny, who was politically in prison at the time of the interview and then coincidentally died super shortly thereafter. But I think this is a really important part of the Putin-Russia story that wasn't covered as vast and as good as Tucker's expose was. I, I thought it was great, but this is an important part that just wasn't covered that I think we as free thinkers need to consider. Now, those who aren't free thinkers, we like to think in black and white, like, tell, is it good or is it bad? Well, unfortunately, there's a shitload of nuance when it comes to any topic worth considering. And I think the same is true of Putin and Russia. And it's a pain in the butt to sort through nuances because we typically don't arrive at black and white thinking. We arrive at incredibly nuanced thinking, which takes a lot of calories, a lot of brain power. That's why a lot of blue haired sheep don't like to do it. But with that said, let me know your thoughts on Alexei Navalny's death. If you think it's suspicious, if you think it was definitely like he was killed for, you know, you know why, or you think, you know, he just died of natural causes uh, of, of sudden death syndrome. So let me know what you think in the comments. And I appreciate you watching this video with me, my beautiful freedom loving friend. I look forward to seeing you on the next one, but until then, stay free.